Hi, I'm Tessa from Tales from Outside the Classroom, and today I'm going to show you how you can use PDFs inside Google Classroom with your students with just a few clicks of the button. So first I have the PDF I'm going to want to use with my students. These are my multi-step word problems of the day. Um, as you can see in this file, it starts with like the normal teacher cover, then terms of use, then some teacher directions before it finally gets into the PDF. This one is 10 pages with the answer keys at the back. So I certainly don't want to give my students access to the answer keys, so I need to edit this PDF. So I'm going to do that by hovering over here and clicking the print button. Now these directions are a little bit different on a Mac. I don't know exactly what those directions are, I'm sorry, um, but I know there are similar steps. So after I click to print, I come over here to destination, and you can see um, because I used this just a few minutes ago, I can click to save it as a PDF, um, and so that keeps um, me able to choose the pages I want. Save to Google Drive, uploads it to Google Drive, and I already have my file there. And for me, I would rather just uh, upload the file that way. So I'm going to click to save as PDF, and then I'm choosing which pages. So instead of saying all pages, I click custom. Now I know I don't want pages one, two, three, uh, because those are not for students. So I can start at page four. So I can click four through and 13 would be all 10 pages that I want with students. Um, by putting that dash there uh, means through, we're sort of used to seeing that as a symbol for through. A comma separates it as and. So I can do four through 13 and page 15. Uh, and page 16. So I can intermix both of them within here. So this might be helpful if you have a PDF where an answer key is every other page. So you can go through and put in add numbers, things like that. When I click save, I will get an additional pop-up and it'll ask me where I want to save that to. Now, if you use uh, Google Drive, it's super easy because you can go ahead and toggle to your specific Google Drive folder. It saves it uh, into your Google Drive right from here. So this is nice um, if you have like a classroom or a student work folder in your Google Drive, you can go ahead and place this here. One nice way of doing this with students, so this is just 10 pages. So uh, for my students, I do these every day. So in a digital setting, I might give students the entire thing and give them directions each day to re-access it from their Google Drive and have the assignment a month long assignment that's not due till the end. For some students, especially younger students, it's too much to keep track to go back and forth. So you might choose to create P PDFs of every individual page. Uh, you might choose to make a PDF that has five pages, one for every day of the week. It's really your choice and how much time you want to spend doing that. Now, creating one for every day is a little bit cumbersome and time consuming this way, but it's certainly possible. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel out because I don't need to change that. And I'm going to come over to my class classroom. So I'm going to create a new classwork assignment. I'm going to title it sample PDF and then I'm going to add that file I just uh, edited the way I wanted it to. So however I saved that. For me, I'm going to just do my original for the purposes of this. So I'm going to insert that, but I'm going to be sure I come over here and click to make a copy for each student. What this does is allows each student to have their own version so they uh, are able to write right on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and click assign without changing anything on the side. And it works on making a copy for each student. So you can see that that assignment is here. I'm gonna come over as a student, I'm gonna refresh. So you can see that it has updated and I'm going to click here or of course, um, I could have gone over to classwork. I'm going to click to open it. And now if you remember, I just attached the original. I didn't create a new one. So you will see it now has my name on it because I created a copy for each student. After you have edited the file, if you chose to do that, it would start with the first page you chose. 
I'm going to go ahead and go um, down to show you this is the first page I'm going to do. But before I do anything else, I need to come here to open with. So this opens that PDF. Um, and I'm going to choose to use DocHub. For me, because I've used DocHub before, it shows under connected apps for your students or for you because it's the first time you're using it. It'll show under suggested third party apps. When you click it, you have to go through like three or four pages of permissions, uh, allowing it to connect to your drive, um, to your documents, things like that. It takes just a moment for it to get ready and upload. Um, I'm gonna scroll back down to that page four and show you how I'm able to use this. So here are um, most of the tools. There's page controls. Um, so you can see each of the pages. You can manage the fields that get shown here. I'm gonna turn that off um, because basically with your students, there's just a few that you're probably gonna use. Undo and redo um, the pointer. And then here's what's really nice. You can add a text box. So here's this one. They can type whatever they would like and you see it auto saves just like Google Docs. So the students are used to it. There are some very basic um, editing features here. There's a few fonts to choose from. There's a whole lot more. If you have a premium version, you can center space, um, change line spacing, things like that. You can move that text box or you can delete it if you've made a mistake. Students can highlight. This um, makes a rectangle. So you have to teach your students how to draw a rectangle holding their mouse. But for problem solving, it's great uh, for students to be able to add that rectangle. There's also a pen so they can draw freehand. So I'm going to write my equation by hand. You can see it's not the easiest to do, but it's no different or more complicated with DocHub than it is trying to freehand with any other software. So over time, the students get a little bit better doing it. Uh, it's obviously not great when you're writing numbers. I've always talked to my students about things like that. I'm going to use um, the typing tool instead. Uh, but if I want to draw a picture, it's obviously easier if I try to do that by hand. So I can draw that there. You can see that last circle kind of disappeared for a moment. Every once in a while, there's a little bit of the, a glitch and you just have to tell your students to wait a moment and be patient and it'll uh, reappear. So I can draw my picture to help me. Um, I can erase something I have done. So let's say I made a mistake there. And so I want to erase that whole box. I just make a box over it. Um, you can see sort of that outline. If I, I can click, but it tells me I need to make my box larger. It looks like clicking will work, but it doesn't work that way. So let's say I am done with this page as a student and I want to turn it in. So I come over here to download export. You can also get to that under that drop down. So I click and I go to Google Drive. I don't want to download it to my computer because I want to keep it on the web um, to share with my teacher. I update my existing with the revision. So this updates the same file that's in my drive. So I click export to drive. It takes just a second to do that. I click OK. You can also go click to see it in your drive. And now I'm going to show you as a teacher what that looks like. So I'm going to come back to classwork. I'm going to click on that assignment and view it. And now I want to see that student's individual work. So I click on it and you can see it open right inside classroom. And I scroll down to that page four that I worked on. And you can see my work is right here. So this is really nice because it auto updates right to classroom with just that one click of the button. Now there is, if you saw, a classroom tab. But what this does is creates a share link. It tells you you need to verify your account and it's just a little bit more complicated. So you have to be intentional with showing your them to update it in um, classroom or I'm sorry, you want them to update it in drive instead of in classroom. Just showing them once or twice usually does enough uh, to get students used to it.
So now it's updated, that same file is updated, so you can teach your students, they can go right to their drive to access that file again tomorrow. When they click on it, they would again go to .cub to update it, and they're able to update that same file however many times they need. I hope this is helpful for you, um, and I hope it makes it easier for you to use PDFs within Google Classroom.